This is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. This week, our story concerns a communist narcotics ring and a plan to trade illegal drugs for American defense secrets. The good Lord has certainly made a lot of people, no two of them exactly alike. All kinds, all religions, all political beliefs, all races, merchants, doctors, housewives, lawyers, salesgirls, secretaries, and advertising men like Herb Philbrick. They all look pretty much alike. You don't even notice most of them. Unless one of them happens to be like the one behind me. He's a communist. He looks, he listens, he misses nothing. He'll hear you ask for your order, so you go upstairs to get it. That's one of the grinding, deadly facts of being a communist. You're never alone. Always someone looking over your shoulder. There's nothing you can make out of this, comrade. Philbrick is a camera nut. Anyone will tell you that. But they won't tell you that today the FBI has chosen this as a meeting place. Come in, Herb. Pull up a can of developing fluid and sit a spell. Uh, sorry, Evans, I'm in a hurry. I seem to have picked up an escort on my way over here this morning. Oh, comrade? Yeah. Anything special in the wind? Nothing that I know of. But if I spend much time here in this dark room, I'm sure going to be sweating out an explanation to the party brass. How much do you know about the communist dope traffic locally? Oh, nothing really. That's one thing the comrades don't talk about. Is it a big operation? Pretty big, Herb. The FBI has reason to believe that the comrades have a supply of nearly 200 tons of uncut heroin. The International Narcotics Control traced it in the fields in Red China to Hong Kong, where it disappeared into the Red Underground. Wow. All they need is one addict in a sensitive job in a defense plant, trading information for his supply of dope, and the whole venture pays off. Yeah. Well, where does the Bureau figure me into the operation? Obviously, there are not going to be any leaks inside the party. That's true. That's why this request is a little offbeat. We're not lacking for information. This time, just personnel. Here's what I mean. Each X on this map represents a corner of the business district where most of the stuff is being passed on. Exactly where, we don't know. Our plan is to keep these different points under observation for one week. It's a big job. Right. We're using every agent in the district, and that's where you come in, Herb. You and a movie camera. Movie camera? Aiming from here, your office window, to the corner here. Our information is that the supplier, he's the guy that gets the dope to the pushers, makes the collection and the payoff. He operates from 11.30 to noon. As to your explaining what you're doing with a movie camera, I'll leave that up to you. It seems to me that these pushers must be addicts themselves, and as such, they'd be known to you and to the police. They are, but we're not going to move in on them now. This is a coordinated effort, Herb, and when we move, we want to move on the whole setup. The comrades will never know what hit them. When do I start? There's a camera with a 10-minute film magazine. The girl downstairs will sell it to you, I'm sure, if you'll let her. OK, I'll let her.
Terry reporting on Philbrick. Left house 742. Went to a camera shop. 655 Main Street. He did, huh? A camera. Okay, you've done a good job. We'll take it from here. Something interesting, comrade? Report on Herb Philbrick. Just bought a moving picture camera. Comrade Herb, that's not news. I think it is. If a man in Philbrick's financial situation spends that kind of money, it's not for a toy. I want to know what he's planning to photograph. Okay, we'll find out. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Perdoni. And the top of the morning to you, boss. the target, Philbrick. The crowded sidewalk. The happy hunting ground for the commie dope ring. That's what the FBI wants on film. That's your job. You've been shooting pictures for fun most of your life. This is no different. Only it's not for fun. If Adams is right, something's gonna happen on that street corner out there. Something the camera will see. Adams said the critical hour was between 10 and 11. That must be because the pushers are busiest during the noon rush when the crowds are heaviest. We probably have to get their supplies before they can push the stuff. Okay, Adams, we're in business. Now all I have to do is explain this setup to the office force. Yes, Miss Berdoni? Do you have a part for me in your picture, Mr. DeMille? I played the lead in the senior class play. Everyone said I was very natural. Sorry, I'm afraid this picture's all cast. I'll keep you in mind, though. Well, seriously, Mr. Philbrick, what are you up to, really? Advertising gimmick. I'm gonna make a picture of those people down there in the street. Then I'm gonna cut into the middle of the reel and freeze one frame of film. Whoever's in that shot is gonna get a merchandising prize. That is, if I can sell the sponsor on the idea. Incidentally, what was on your mind? There's a new secretary in the office. She's going to relieve the other girls this summer while they're on vacation. I wanted to bring her in here to meet you. Okay? Yeah. Oh, uh... Wait a minute. I think I'll go out with you and meet her. I, uh, I want to look in on the layout department anyway and see how the new fall campaign is shaping up. A new face around the office. A girl looking for a break in the advertising game or a communist looking for big game. Something to report to the party secret police. You figure it out, Philbrick. She won't give you any special kind of handshake. Mr. Philbrick, to you, the boss. Yes, Mr. Marshall. I'll get on it right away. Right. Uh, nice meeting you, Miss Barr. Hope you like working with us. Thank you. Mr. Perdoni, will you bring your book, please? Virginia, I just wanted you to know that I got the job. Everything's wonderful. She's got the job. The same type of copy will be used in newspapers and magazines. I think that's about what the boss had in mind. Type it up rough, will you, and let me take a look at it. Sure thing. Uh, you might as well take the file with you. Okay. Now we'll find out about Miss Barr's politics and what she's really doing here. Perdoni, I just had another thought on that copy. Have Miss Barr bring in the file, will you please? Just a minute, comrade. You can take the file back with you. Something wrong, Miss Barr? Satisfied, Philbrick? Big enough reaction? That girl will be a great little help around this office. To the comrades. They never give up, Herb. As long as there are two communists left in the world, 
One of them will be spying on the other one. 11.25. Time I got this show on the road. Sandy, doing your Christmas mailing early this year, aren't you, Herb? Yeah, yeah, just getting off a little time bomb for J. Edgar Hoover. Nothing really, but I always say it's the thought that counts. Okay, Santa Claus. Look, the reason I stopped you, there was a Miss Barr working for your office. What happened? Didn't she tell you? Just that you nailed her. What was the big idea? You got something you're trying to hide, or don't you think a communist has a right to work and make a living? That's silly. We were in my office together, and I called her comrade so she'd know she was among friends. Well, pretty clever to spot her that fast. That's more than I could say from Miss Barr. We like having clever people in the party, Herb, if they're not too clever. You heard what the man said. Don't be too clever. Not if you want to live to be an old communist. Not if you want to live, period. at all, Philbrick. Quiet lunch in the park all by yourself. No commies, no FBI, no campaign deadlines at the office. Sounds good, doesn't it? Even if it's only for half an hour. You're out of touch with everything. Nobody's on your frame. Comrade Dixon sent me to tell you he's waiting in the car. He couldn't let me have my lunch in peace, huh? Maybe he wants to show you how easy it is for him to put his finger on you, comrade. Any time he chooses, any place you happen to be. I'm not taking you away from your lunch. I've already eaten. To come right to the point, Herb, I understand you're interested in photography. As a hobby? You have quite a bit of camera equipment. I can't go by a camera store without going inside. You've taken motion pictures, haven't you? Yeah. Recently? Mm-hmm. How does your stuff look? Okay, I guess. I'm no professional. Sometimes I, I miss an exposure a little bit, but for the most part, it seems all right. Do you ever keep your camera down at the office? Matter of fact, it's there right now. Good. Maybe I'll run in one day soon and have a look at it. Philbrick. Yes, I okayed that layout. Yeah, let it go. Right. Yes? There's a newspaper man outside. He's very interested in this advertising stunt you've been cooking up in here for the past week. You didn't tell him about it? Only that you were working on a really colossal idea. Was that a mistake? No, I guess not. As long as you didn't tell him all the details about that camera and what I'm doing. Can you see him? He's very interested in talking to you. Yeah, I guess I better. Newspaper story is an advertising man's best friend. Oh, but uh, stall him for a minute. I'll buzz you on the intercom when I'm ready. Take your time, Philbrick. Think. If this man is a communist, he came here to pick up where Miss Barr left off. He wants to know about that camera, what you're doing with it in this office. Better get rid of it. No. It's one more reel. Ten more minutes until 12 o'clock. The FBI expects you to keep it rolling.
Nobody would ever notice that camera now, unless they were looking for it. Have to cover that whirring sound. Can't stall him too long. Mr. Doney, send the gentleman in, please. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Tilbury. Mr. Tilbury? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, sit down. Kirby's my name. Leonard Kirby. Just took over the ad agency beat for the Daily Sentinel. I'll uh, be dropping around now and then. I hope you'll give me a few hot tips. Oh, nice to know you. Well, let's see if we can't dream something up for you. Oh, excuse this. I've got a very important luncheon engagement. Go right ahead. Uh, tell me, how about a story on that new advertising gimmick your secretary told me you had in the works? You mean the game with the serial numbers on the dollar bills? I guess so. She didn't give me any details. She said something about uh, merchandise giveaway. Fairly ancient gag, really. The way I plan to work it, every customer that gets a dollar bill and change at X department store, well... Certain of the dollar bills will bear lucky serial numbers. I see. About all there is to it, really. The, uh, the customer with the lucky serial number gets a merchandise prize. Well, when do you kick off on this thing and where? You know, I'm not sure but what the sponsor himself would like to break this story. If you don't mind waiting outside for a minute, I'll get the advertising manager on the phone. Ordinarily, I'd mind. But you've got a cute secretary. Don't be an idiot, Philbrick. Not on this phone. early this morning. I suppose to top it off, the wife will want to go to the pictures tonight. Yeah? Yeah. It's for you, Philbert. Hello, Herb. Adams, see what you can find out about a Leonard Kirby. He's a reporter on the Sentinel. Yeah, call me back in my office just as soon as you can. He's there and I'm stalling him. He's about my build. He wears very heavy horn rim glasses. Leonard Kirby. Right. Send him in here. Yes, sir. I heard him. Good, that's quick work. Get me a Herb Philbrick at his office. Herb Philbrick, please. Herb, your copy is 100% okay with us. Clean as a whistle and exactly what he says he is, a newspaper man. Go ahead as you see fit. And the sponsor says he wants to hold off for a few days. I will try and give you a 24-hour exclusive, though, when we do break the story. Thanks, anyway, for trying. See you. Right. Well, that was a load off my mind. I'll give you the gruesome details sometime. If you're not doing anything around 7.30 tonight, you might drop by room 806, Kensington Hotel. We'll be running your film. I'll be there.
Having trouble at home, Philbrick? No. Why? I thought you were stopping at a hotel. I'm not stopping at the hotel. An out-of-town client of my office is. We're having dinner together in his suite. Is that all right with you? I'm the house detective. Will you step over there, sir? House detective? What do you want with me? I'd rather discuss it over there if you don't mind. Well, why do we have to go over there? When the FBI is covering a situation, they don't miss. My curious comrade is finding that out the hard way. Hello, Herb. Hi. Have any trouble getting up here? Minor skirmish with a comrade. The hotel detective took care of that. The reason I got you up here was to see if you could identify this chap. Yeah. Would you get that herb, please? I'm afraid I gave your friend a rough time down there. Well, that's too bad. Herb, I want you to meet Special Agent Henry, our film editor. How do you do? How are you, Herb? What happened downstairs? Well, I told the comrade that I recognized him from the Hotel Association's bulletin. That he was wanted for passing rubber checks. Yeah? And was he? No, but he was sure eager to identify himself and get out of this hotel. <laughs> I'll paste a gold star on your report card. Well, I guess we're ready to roll. You got the screen, will you, Henry? Sure. This reel is an edited composite of all the film you shot for us during the past week, Herb. I had Henry trim out everything that looked legitimate. He says we've got something here. This is from your first day, Herb. Doesn't look like much, does it? People just minding their business. Now, look at this little guy coming in now. Hey, see? You know him, Herb? No. Never saw him before. The first time we saw this happen, it didn't mean a thing to anybody. In fact, I was watching somebody else in the shop. And then we got your second day in from the lab. Here comes our friend. I'll admit we were still passing this off as a coincidence until we ran the first two days side by side. I've got a blow-up of that frame in the slide projector so you can really see it. There didn't seem to be anything out of line in what he was doing, so we waited to see what would come up on your third day. The third day he showed, we decided there had to be something here. We studied every frame. Now watch this. There, that wad of paper's in his hands. Well, that's it. You sure the rag picker's your man? Positive. I'm willing to bet you there's about $30,000 worth of dope concealed in those old newspapers. This is it, the final scene. And here comes our star performer right on cue. You were great in the part, comrade, but wait until you read the reviews. I'm afraid your whole cast will find that they've walked into an unhappy ending. Are we going out of production, Chief? The picture's in the can? That's right, Bordoni. We've got it made. supplied to the FBI made it possible to destroy and later convict the communist narcotics ring. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, the kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs>